ragged terrain of vernacular literature by Vinvini de Erlumbera. The, re the regional literature have been having lots of bumps in its journey, embracing it is a lot to take. The causes of its problem are the problem of material, the problem of man, and the problem of methodology. The advancement of the vernacular literature in the Philippines is a very difficult task, yet a, na a national responsibility which it needs to be taken care of. While it is evident that our country still lacks literary materials, scholar academician, and theor theorists, methods to foundationally tighten and smoothing up out the prior direction of vernacular writing. Our predominant cultural attitude of vernacular literature is very is a very root why we view the literature of the book differently. The first is the problem of the material. Collecting of a specimen of vernacular literature was laid by seven decades, which means many works are no longer available and some are kept libraries of vigilantly guarded Filipiniana section of Philippines. Written by Filipinos or foreigners, collections are fully inadequate. Second is the problem of men. The problem of attracting vernacular literature to study is no longer a problem but instead the academic preparation of those who are eager to work on vernacular literature. The responsibilities of meeting the problem lies on universities and colleges. All need to change the misconception that the history of the Philippine literature evolves around the achievement of our writers in English. Once this corrected, a serious student of Philippine literature must develop proficiency in a vernacular tongue other than Filipino. Third, the problem of methodology, which is three-step process. Humanize the literary works, identify the providence of literary work, and establish its links with its writer's life and other works for a deeper appreciation of various psychological and social pressure that underlie creative writing. Next, the sits with the literary works in history, the chronological hierarchy or literary works within given period of time, the background of an event that left imprint on the writer's mind and his productions. The poems become significant pieces attesting to the persistence of political protest against the imposition of American colonial rule in the Philippines. The local writers, previous and contemporaneous, alongside the author of this, must be evaluated. Next is the rituals in school. Finally, is the literary of the country as a whole. C is to define the critic perspective that would help understand the literary works and determine this work either as a sociological document or as literature. in the modern language from the Akumila by Marty Ali. First, to give pleasure and to teach learning from the pop songs. When teaching literature in the Philippine language, one must keep his mind the basic functions of literature are to give pleasure and to teach. So what do we not realize is that we practice literature every moment of our lives. So how do we give pleasure and to teach literature? So it is by the effective properties of literature. So we do respond to this properties in the After a day, and nuances from tone, accent, choice of words, face, rhythms of speech, loudness or softness of the utterance. All these almost mean. So according to Susan Sintab, Filipinos are oral because we are responsive towards anything we need sounds. This is observed especially in our native songs. So example is this, is this very popular Warai drinking song. It is if you see Tagay Tagay, hanto ba ang palalaksi? Kundi rin mo, it is kisan maluya ang kalawasan. No. The first regularity of the rhythm and its rightness. Second, the rhyme. So the enjoyment of this song is muscular and aerobic because the song invites the body to move to the rhythm. It emphasizes the importance of the community. So, second, what do you really teach when you teach literature? So first, you teach the beauty and the power of language and its tremendous civilizing influence. Second, you restore our dignity of our indigenous languages and spur our sense of pride over our own culture. Third, you enhance your moral and ethical which will make you a better version, person, and functional member of the community. Or, you develop compassion and sympathy, and thus become better equipped to face life's challenges. Here, you educate the imagination. Six, you encourage creativity. Seven, you improve your thinking and analytic skills. Eight, you enhance language skills. Nine, you increase your knowledge of human civilization. Ten, you become a well-rounded, thoroughly educated. 
Second, what do you teach when you teach literature? There are few rules that can help in rereading success. We must see poetry first about the human This is how one might infer the context of the book next to context of the voice. Also known as the persona, the reader stands outside the poem, the better to see it and turn to the We also understand our role in the regard to the Adana. So, um, the persona defines the role of the reader. It becomes by turns its proper competence, spectator, critic, judge, inspirator, sympathizer, or simply as we are most of the time, the passerby can the their heart of and is moved by the encounter of the empathy. So what do you really teach when you teach literature? So first, you teach the beauty and power of language and its tremendous civilizing influence. Second, you restore our dignity of our indigenous languages and spur our sense of pride over our own future. Third, you enhance your moral and ethical sense which will make you a better person and functional member of the human community. Fourth, you remember compassion and sympathy and thus become better in the face that you have to do with and you gain their imagination. Six, you encourage creativity. Seven, you improve your thinking and analysis. Eight, you enhance language skills. Nine, you increase your knowledge of our human communication. Ten, you become a well-grounded authority as a human. Tawano Literature in the Philippines Tawano Literature refers to the body of oral and written literature of speakers of Tawano, the mother tongue of a quarter of the country's population, by people that live in Bohol, Timor, Negros Oriental, and parts of Leia and Mindanao. The Tawano is in a rich oral tradition. This is evident in the numerous legends from specific locales like Maria Takao of Southern Cebu and Halingan East of Havan Leon, Tawano. There are various poetic forms in Tawano literature. These are the Dagai or Versus, Halito or Ashamans of Prayer, Pigmo or Vedos, and Penultipod or the Proverbs. Balak is a generic poetic form and is characterized by the presence of Balay Balay or Enigma or something like or Metal Form. The characteristics of Sabuana literature include that most of the poems are sung, some are extemporaneous poetic debates between a man and a woman, often sung and danced simultaneously. Spontaneity is highly valued and most of the literary works were all. Written literature only became popular in the late 19th century. Mommy by Vicente Soto, written in 1901, was the first example of the narratives. Vicente Soto was considered as the father of Cebuano letters. The press has played a big role to the development of literature before the World War II started. Pre Commonwealth fiction was mostly nationalistic and didactic in spirit, but later it was replaced by a more imaginative story like love, detection, and adventure. Only Visaya literature has survived as a literary outlet in Cebuano. When it comes to drama, the one of literature is the weakest. The one of playwrights have slowly adopted into radio and TV script writing. Through the sport of arts, sound tells me, many became interested in it. One well known Sibuana literature writer is Carazon Amaro. She uses the student name Mario de Cacao. She taught literature and creative writing in Sibuana University. She was a writer in residence at Hedgeford International Women's Writers Residency in the Washington State She wrote the famous Sibuana poem. How does it feel to is a story of a woman who was mentally unsettled from a certain town where people used to judge her and used her to intimidate children. One of these is Ellen the owner of a bakery who has a son named Bimbi. And when her son is missing and found out to be with Talia, she was furious. <laughs> 